This is part two of my Turbo Miata series, and you can see the engine behind me. It is ready to go into the Miata. I'm waiting on a couple friends to show up. Uh, we're about to put the motor in it, but I'll show you some of the changes. I put everything back on. I didn't show all this stuff because it wasn't that exciting, like putting these silicone hoses on. And here's the bracket for my air conditioner compressor, and then the power steering. I put these engine mounts on. Then I cleaned up everything. Here's the oil pan, cleaned up and reinstalled. Here's this side. I replaced these hoses as well. And then I put the starter back in. I cleaned up all this stuff. And then I added these lines for the turbo. These are the coolant lines coming from my reroute. And then I added this oil line. The oil line goes around here, around the back. And this is where the oil line originates. It's right next to the filter. And that's a oil pressure sensor. So here's the motor, it's ready to go in. We added this quilted armor on top to protect my wrinkle coat red paint job. The huge pile of parts that I had is starting to shrink. That's a good sign. My garage is starting to look relatively clean again. I'm excited about that. The engine is officially in the car. Some of the problems that I had installing this were, the biggest one is probably these mounts. These are innovative motor mounts and see how this is in the car right now? How this has uh, that, flat, that flat side right there and then on the bottom there's the uh, 45 degree angle part, so down there. Those, that bottom part was flipped around when Innovative sent me these mounts. So it was incorrect, so I had to take those off and flip it around 180 degrees. And that caused a lot of grief. It, it probably made me waste like eight hours of time trying to get this engine in. But after I figured that out, it made the engine a lot, go in a lot easier. Um, and now I, I actually have vertical adjustment. When, the, when those were flipped around, the adjustment ended up looking more horizontal than vertical. The turbo is just sitting in here. Getting these V-band connectors to made up was very difficult for this downpipe. And then I also had to hack away some of the inside sheet metal right here, and I used a Dremel to do that. I apologize, I didn't show a lot of the clutch installation when I had the engine out, because it's, if the motor is out of the car, the clutch installation is really straightforward. I just used the Happy Meal from Flying Miata. My next major steps are to hook up all the electrical connectors, hook up all the vacuum tubes and all the lines, and then get the accessory belts, so air conditioning, power steering, and then the alternator belt. And then hook up some of the rest of the big stuff, make sure all the power plant frame bolts are tight, Here's the virtual dyno pull after I got it up and running. It's an 86% increase in horsepower and a 75% increase in torque. This is not tuned. I didn't tune the ignition. I just tuned the AFRs. And I'll be posting a video of how to do your first start for a turbo build and what that looked like in a future video. It will be an advanced mega squirt video. I made an introductory mega squirt video for MB2s already, and that's posted on my channel. Update with the Miata. It's not in the lift anymore. I got it running. I got it running really well. I got it tuned. It was running great. It did a virtual dyno at over 200, 200 horsepower. Um, I was tuning it uh, and then I started to do pulls to fill in the rest of my VE table and my coolant was pressurized. So the, 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 my coolant lines, they were seeing a lot of uh, like liquid and, and, and uh, vapor leaking out of some of my coolant lines. So I was tightening some of those up. But I think what happened is my head gasket blew. So I, I had turboed it and driven it around for like 30 hours and I was getting the tuning just dialed in and this fitting right here blew out 
and it discharged my coolant in about 30 seconds. So I was driving and all of a sudden my radiator temperature started to go up. My coolant temperature started to increase. I got a warning on my mega squirt that I was 230 degrees, which isn't particularly hot from what I've seen in the past. When I've seen my car overheat on really hot track days, I've seen my coolant gauge go all the way to the right into H. This did not happen here. It was a little bit on the high side, but it wasn't bad at all. It was still in a normal operating range. The 230 degrees is what I saw on the Mega Squirt. If you're turbocharging an older car, be really wary of these old pressed fit connections. I stopped driving the car hard, and 30 seconds later, the engine cut out. Check out this elite figure. As the coolant levels start to drop, an air pocket is formed between the coolant temperature sensor and the leak point where the coolant is leaking out. That level starts to drop, an air pocket is formed, and the coolant temperature sensor will no longer register the temperature that's inside the internal part of the motor because there isn't a fluid to exchange temperature between the temperature sensor and the inside point. The fluid is gone. I don't know what temperature the inside of my motor got to, but it was probably even hotter than 300 Fahrenheit, who knows? But it gets hot super fast because it doesn't have coolant and then things start to break. I tried to start it up later on and I could not get compression. So I was reading 60 PSI across all cylinders. So I'm trying to replace the head gasket. Here is the original head gasket. Um, it's pretty messed up. There aren't any holes in it. Here is the replacement. I'm just gonna go with the Mazda OEM. My head is pretty symmetrical, but it's warped. So if I measure it, this is, there's a little gap right here and it's like 0.1 millimeters. I don't know how bad that is, considering that it's symmetrical and there's two bolts right here. Um, maybe it'll be okay, maybe not. I'm not even sure if it's warped because of the heat, because the, the engine wasn't hot that long. I'm not really sure, there's a lot of unknowns. So what I'm trying to do is just put the head gasket on and see what happens. Regarding this fitting, from the factory, it's like a pressed in fitting and I tapped it with a quarter inch NPT and I'm gonna make a, or I have a barb fitting coming for this. So it'll be a quarter inch MPT to eighth inch barb. And then when I had this all out again, I went and I put some JB Weld into these coolant caps because I've heard that people have had these blow out on them before. The turbo isn't adding a lot more temperature, but it definitely is adding more cylinder pressure. So when things blow out or you know air gets, or pressure gets into your crankcase, it's gonna be more than it ever was before. So some of this stuff can fail that, that never appeared to be failing before. The engine's back together. I got it all timed. I got that new head gasket in there. And it didn't work. So I'm still reading 60, 40, 50, and 60. It didn't change at all. I put a little bit of oil into the cylinders and it went up like five PSI. So I'm not convinced that it's the piston rings but I also put some air into here and I did like a leak down test on this. And these, let's see if I can get a clip here. These valves are not only in really bad shape, I sprayed some oil in there to test them out. They're leaking at top dead center excessively. So the exhaust valves and the intake valves, I can open this throttle and when I'm doing that leak down test, air is just like gushing out of both of them when this is at top dead center. Really, when this is at any position, there's no position I can get any of the cylinders in that the valves are seating really well. So I think that might be the issue that I'm having. What happened is I was driving, it overheated, and it might have just toasted the head. The head, like I said, is warped. It's 0.1 millimeter. Uh, it's, it's warped 0.1 millimeters. The spec is 0 0.002 millimeters. So that's 50 times worse than the allowable tolerance from the factory. My next plan is to just buy a replacement head. I could buy a replacement motor that it's running and I could just drop it in and put all my stuff on there that I've already done, like the oil return for the turbo, the oil supply to the turbo, and my coolant reroute, and my valve cover. I could do that, but I'm not gonna do it because I wanna learn how to diagnose this stuff for when it happens in the future. You know, why is it not making compression? What did I do to it? And I'm just gonna go step by step. So if the head doesn't fix it, and the head is measuring pretty poorly right now, so that's my next guess. I'm gonna do the head, if that doesn't fix it, then it's gonna be piston rings. So then I'll have to pull the motor out 
and open up the bottom end. To troubleshoot this problem, I wasn't just blindly attacking it. I was making measurements and I was not seeing any blow by out of the oil dipstick tube or the PCV ports on the cylinder head cover. And I was checking all the resources I could find online. And this is just ChatGPT. It says the top four reasons why I, I might lose cylinder compression. Worn piston rings, that's a possibility, but the Miata has some natural oil cooling on those piston rings. Damaged or leaking valves is a very real possibility and that's what I'm measuring on the cylinder head. And then cylinder head gasket failure, I changed this already so I know that's not the problem. And then the cylinder wall wear or damage. Since I had the head off, I was able to check that and confirm that the cylinder walls look really good. They look perfect, smooth, there's no visible damage. Therefore, I have addressed three out of the four of the top items on this list, and I'm confident that, that it might solve, solve the issue. Maybe there's a 75% chance this will work. This is the cylinder head that I just bought, and the vendor is the Star Fox Cylinder Heads. They're out of California. It's just a small shop. It's 900 bucks for a new cylinder head, and then you send them your core and there's no upfront core cost or core charge, but I think if you don't send them your old core, they'll charge you $400. I don't wanna tease you too much, but there is good news in the future for the Turbo Miata. Stay tuned for part three. I should be posting it next week. Thank you for watching.